Okay, we need to get fucking on track. <laughs> Anyways, it's school, <laughs> three school has started. It's day three. <laughs> Give day it up day for day, day three. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how I feel. Like, that episode of SpongeBob. Like, it, it's when they're, like, the Krusty Krab is running 24-7. <laughs> and so on day three, they're absolutely losing their minds. That is exactly how I feel. I feel like we are running 24-7. Yeah. 24 hours a day. No, we literally haven't had much of a break. And, like, every aspect of our lives, like, not just academic, not just personal, not just work, all of them are on full fucking run. Like, there's no... Because sometimes, like, schools just cry, like, like, being a lot, and then everything else is fine. But, no, like, nothing is fine. Everything is a lot. Nothing is just chill. Are we not going to keep the drinking frame? <laughs> Or should we? I mean, if you're we're thinking, sharing it. Well, yeah, we're sharing it. We only had budget for one drink. <laughs> <laughs> our podcast hasn't made us enough money yet to both get our own drink. <laughs> um, no, literally. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> when, like, I remember in high school for some reason, like, asking my mom... Stuff about, like, her high school experience, like, whatever, just to, like, compare them, you know? I was like, oh, what about this? And, like, her, I remember, like, her not being able to remember, like, stuff that I could not believe she forgot. I was like, how did you, like, this isn't, like, this is such basic, like, big event. I was like, how did you forget this? Right. But literally today, in this very moment, I'm like, this is how, I was thinking about, like, what childhood memories are being erased (laughs) to, like, be able to be filled with the stuff that I'm learning right now (laughs) like they are actively like getting rid of my childhood to fill it with this (laughs) i was like this this is how you don't remember high school we lost his name (laughs) we threw out his name yeah that's it that's where (laughs) i get it um that's so well actually like I think like that's where me and Gia have always been like crossed at because Gia will be like, How do you not remember that? And I'm like <laughs> Like she was asking me about the FAFSA, how what I filled out on the FAFSA, and I was like <laughs> I don't Well you seem like you have a pretty bad memory in general. <laughs> <laughs> that Drew is talks true. talks about it a lot. Does he? What does he say? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. I wish I was kidding, but I've never noticed him talk about it much. <laughs> Three, two. Welcome, welcome to, to crisis, crisis with, with Kira and Isis. Okay. So the <laughs> name of the episode is "Welcome Home." Hmm. Um, Similar to last episode, we were talking about welcome to college. Once you kind of get into college, it's the first time you're creating your own space. Um, even if you have to share it with like eight different monkeys, it's fine. Yeah. Like, this is your own space. <laughs> and you kind of have to start deciding like what you want that space to look like and how it's going to represent you. So we're going to kind of go into my home and Kira's home and how we kind of got there and what it kind of feels like for everybody or at least to us. Yes. Welcome to our homes. Well, so basically the past couple of years and like having my own space and then also, you know, working with others in specific spaces like the sorority. Well, uh, well pfft, if you didn't know, literally ISIS is, is my big in our sorority. So that part. that's how we literally met. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Join Greek life. <laughs> yeah. Like my freshman year and my then... very first semester here, like within the first month, ISIS was... We were in the same sorority, and then she became my big, and we've been in love ever since. <laughs> yeah, and that just, like, I think, like, wonderful things come from it, and it's shaped a lot of, like, who we all are, and especially how who we are in our relationship is thanks to that. Yeah, and big is essentially just, like, big sister in mm-hmm. the sorority. Your mentor through your pledging process. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck, how I go. Oh, so, right, b- curating spaces. I realize that I deeply care about ambiance and my, like, happiness and, like, creative spirit. And, like, my spirit is, like, very affected by ambiance. So, naturally, 
when I have guests at my home, I deeply care about the ambiance. And I would like to talk about good versus bad ambiance. So, the definition of ambiance is the character and atmosphere of a place. And it goes into, like, a lot of your five senses. And I think creates, like, a dynamic and, like, interesting relationship with your senses and excites them and stimulates them. I would say... <laughs> and this is, like, specific to college. Or it's kind of a joke, but it's more than, you know, a strip of red LED lights mm -hmm. hung up. Um, okay, so... In order to identify good ambiance, we have to identify terrible ambiance. Mm -hmm. And the epitome of terrible ambiance. <laughs> epitome or epitome? Epitome. Okay. I said epitome. <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to correct you. No, Hopefully, no, you I just wasn't sure. I was like, am <laughs> yeah, I saying yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, No, it's epitome. Where souls go to die, the office. <laughs> You know her. You don't love her. <laughs> she makes you cry. The office. Okay. So what I like to call zombieance. <laughs> it seems like it took inspiration from a cave. Number one, harsh, fluorescent, white lighting. Garbage. Terrible. There is usually a lack of windows, so you're lacking natural light. Two, it's decorated in colors of grays and beiges. Terrible. Awful. Mm -hmm. So uninspiring. Soul crushing. It's the spirit of sick people. It's the color of death. It's sad. No, no. Bad. No good. <laughs> Number three, it's stuffy, it's dry, it's stale, and it smells like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. um, and four, it's cold. And five, it's quiet, usually. And it's harsh. And, like, we're talking about auditorily here. It's, it's quiet, it's harsh, it's tense, and it's censored. And all of these create a very uncomfortable, just terrible experience. And I cannot believe that we subject, like so many adults to work in spaces like this. It's like insane. every day. How uninspiring and soul-crushing it must be. And I am so sorry. <laughs> the other thing that, like, sucks about it is, like, it's a choice. Compared to, like, outside, you have no choice on what the weather looks like. You have no choice mm -hmm. on, like, what season it is. Mm -hmm. But, like, you fully have a choice. Like, people who design buildings, <clears throat> people who de decorate buildings, people who pick buildings to work out of like these decision makers choose misery yeah which is like obviously a lot of it has to do with like cost but there's no way that it costs such a significant amount that you can't like add color no but, shape it's all oh, square yeah everything's all angular edges. yeah Egg yeah. Uh, yeah and it's like okay yes under yeah understandably cost but it's like you you spend practically a third of your day and like life in this space and if it like makes you want to freaking <laughs> jump out the window like that why 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 have we like as society like accepted that as like sufficient and normal it's so significant to like your well-being and like creativity and productivity and, like, everything. It well, matters. Like, it, it matters. Well, isn't it the other thing is, like, people automatically try to spruce up the place. They'll bring in their own decorations, photos <laughs> of their family. And it's, like, right. that right. Your be... natural instinct, your literally instinct, instinct. is to bring in anything like that any makes you feel more life. comfortable. Your, your, na your human need is, like, I need color and yeah. squish. Yeah. Texture. Okay, so a lot of things that I do in my spaces that makes me happy and I feel like is I counteracting the zombiance of the office is number one, dealing with lighting, lamps, lamps everywhere. Oh my God. Lots of lamps. Lamps everywhere. I have a lamp like by my kitchen sink, like in my kitchen <laughs> and like doing my dishes with just the lamp on at night, amazing. <laughs> And, and like, the countertops, like, you can't see, like, scratches or, like, scuffs or, like, stains. So it just, like, mutes all of the, like, funk. Some backstories. Kira has an older home. 
I don't even Dude, know. Dude, all the appliances are original and like from the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Ancient. 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 And anything that was white is now slightly yellow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, this isn't because of Kira. It's just what she has. And so yeah. a lot of what, a lot of the difference in mine and Kira's style you're going to learn is purely like us utilizing our spaces as they come yeah. and doing with what we can like some things we're not happy about but they are that that's what we have so that's what we're going to work with and that's what you're going to learn in college or just in your long, young adulthood it's not going to be what you want it's no. never going to be what never. you want even if you work so hard to have it be what you want and spend as much money as you can afford to make it what you want it will not <laughs> be so you just have to accept and yeah fix or just and like you can't fluff you have you cannot force an aesthetic into a space it's not meant for you have to work with the space yes you can't work against it no you have to work with it um so accepting where you are and then just like leaning into like whatever kind of goes with that obviously there is still plenty of room wherever you are for your own like personal preferences but definitely working with the space is huge anyways so lamps and then I would say yellow light bulbs. Definitely change out your white light bulbs for yellow light bulbs, in my opinion. Yeah, I definitely like the warmer. T- you could also do neutral. It just needs to not be white. Yeah. Like the white. Especially the white fluorescent. overhead fluorescent lighting. Um, I think another big thing is like uh, dimmable lights or color changing yeah. lights. Yeah. I really care about like how the lighting changes throughout the day. You know, it affects your sleep. And your mood and, like, everything. And so when it's, like, dark outside, I don't want bright-ass fluorescent lighting as if the sun is in my home. (laughs) Like, absolutely not. Because, you know, the sunset gradually goes down, you know, and your brain processes that it's going into nighttime and it's, you know, getting close to sleepy time. I want that also happening in my house. Right. No, I agree because, like, you've, like, my, you've been to my house. It's either really bright. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> or extremely dark. It's mm-hmm. almost impossible to get, like, not iridescent, fluorescent, hospital brightness and, like, surgery room brightness. Um, so, yeah, lighting's pivotal yeah. to, like, And, like, you a, as a adjustable human. lighting, yeah. especially, which is why lamps are great. Because mm-hmm. the more you have, the less more you can adjustable. turn on. And especially since they're not, like, overhead. And then you right. can, if you can turn off your overhead lighting and just have lamps going, great. Mm-hmm. Great. Obviously, you know, we're in college. We're obviously succumbed to strips of LED lights. I mean, come on. We both have them. <laughs> we both have and them. And we like them. Yeah, I love them. Um, and, like, having ability. Dude, having the ability to change the color of your space is insane. Like, yeah. Automatic. It, uh, aut- red goes on, and I, like, I. <laughs> the, fi- the visceral reaction. <laughs> uh, I literally. Red I, LED lights. Red LED so lights funny. have, like, caused me, like, lifelong, like, it's like when you have to pee and then you step into the bathroom and now you have to pee so much more. That's what red LED <laughs> lights do. Like, I already felt danger before I went wherever I was going and then I see the red <laughs> LED lights and I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of this home. Yeah. Red is dead. Um. Red is dead. If you're a frat boy and it's you're also still using very, red. It's also like, but at this point, it's, on, it's like cliche. It's so It's aggressive. like you you put on red and it's like a joke. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just a joke. Like, yeah, it's so funny. It's just so aggressive. <laughs> um, anyways, I think orange LEDs are the best. Yeah. The best neutral. I have orange going 24-7. I have my orange LEDs on. Yeah. I usually have my orange unless I'm going for a mood. Yeah. If I'm going for a mood, I'm hitting that purple. I yeah. like the purple. I like the... See, there's just sometimes you just don't get the color you're looking for. You know when you're stuck between like green and like green and you're like, but yeah. I just want green. Moving on. <laughs> Anyways, two color. Inspiring color. I would just say, if anything, just like go bold. Like, who cares? Obviously, if you're in a space where you can't paint, this is, like, less obvious. If you can paint, absolutely paint. Who wants four white walls? But I would say if you can't paint, I would say an easy way to just, like, color a wall is with tapestries. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't love that, like, they can, they look cheap sometimes and, like, you know, kind of bad. But just for sheer just amount of color payoff, you get so worth it, in my opinion. Um, I have pink cow print on my walls. Um, 
Well, I think that was a step of your pink. You started with the cow yeah. print, and then from there, now everything else has become pink, pink slowly. Yeah, yeah. And then for me, I cannot so, paint my wall, so uh -huh. I have furniture, and my furniture is going to start becoming more and more colorful. colorful yeah. Because it's like, so I had my space originally, and I was like, I want it to be mature. I want it to be, like, clean and, like, classy and natural wood, like, just not painted wood. Um, but I like thrift a lot of my stuff and literally after a while, my space, it just, my house just started looking like a thrift store yeah. and I was like, this is not <laughs> working. It was dust. It was just so dusty and grandma-y and I realized I was like, what? Like, am I, I, I was just like, I realized, I don't know if the next stage of life, like I'll live alone. This, I know for a fact that this stage of life, I'll be living alone and I have like almost complete freedom to make this look however the heck I want. Also, it's the best time to make the worst interior desi design decisions. So I was like, I have my whole life and like when I'm making adult money to like curate a space of nice natural fibers and like expensive things that'll last a really long time and are timeless, timeless pieces that I can invest in. This is not the time for that. Like, yeah. cause I can't afford any of that right now. So I might as well, like, it's all cheap. So it might as well just be freaking my imaginations, like my Your Barbie house desire, my Barbie house. So that's exactly what I did. I went in a, comp like, almost like after I had that realization, I almost instantly shifted gears into Barbie land. And now I have an entirely pink living room yeah, and a do. blue kitchen. Yeah, you do, <laughs> and it's everything. I love. I now. I, I love. I love it. Um. So the candles, the smells, the smells, a humidifier and incense. <laughs> they both create. They also both create a visual, which is really cool, of like smoke and like mm -hmm. water vapor, which is fun. Very mm -hmm. subtle, but. It adds. Well, like, yeah, having smoke in the room, just smoke in general, we all, as humans, have, like, an appeal to it for whatever yeah. reason. So I like incense. Um, culturally, some people are like, nah, not my thing. Like, mm -hmm. I've had people, like, come into my house and be like, uh, and I'm like. And it smells like a campfire. <laughs> yeah, but then you kind of come to a point where you don't care. And because, like, I go into people's houses, I'm like, ew, why the fuck does it smell like pumpkin spice latte in here? Yeah. So yeah. you just got to accept that you're going to rock with whatever you like. Do what you want. Yeah. But candles, and then also when you're incense. in it and long enough, it goes away. Like you forget yeah. whatever you smell. I don't love really strong incense. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't burn them super often, but I do like them every once in a while. See, I cook a lot, so my house always smells like food. So mm -hmm. the only thing to like <laughs> repel chicken curry in the air is an incense. Yeah. Um which but also like cooking or baking is also a great way to scent your house. Mm -hmm. If um, that's what you're going for. <laughs> that's what you're going for. Um, and I hate Febreze. <laughs> I just want that to be known. I fucking hate Febreze. She also hates car incense. Oh, God. Car fresheners, just air fresheners in general, they literally hurt. They hurt. She, like, comes into my car and every like, she single pulls out time every I car pull incense. Out the ones, and, like, the, the, ones, <laughs> the ones in the air vents, I mean, they're all terrible, but, oh, my God. And she, like, looks unwell. Dude, they literally make me sick. Like, <laughs> oh, God. I haven't bought a new one because she keeps taking the shit out. Amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah. Anyways, I love, for texture and warmth, blankets, rugs, carpet. I have carpet, so I feel like that naturally makes the space, like, like less cold. And, rug and just, like, cloth in general. Fabrics. Uh, is pleasing. It's comfortable. It's comforting. It's cozy. It's warm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Good times. And then I'll always turn on, I usually turn on music if I have guests coming over. I feel like the pinnacle of ambiance. <laughs> this might be like hyperbolic. But fireplace for your home, <laughs> please. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have never <laughs> met someone on this earth who fireplace for home so much. Like most people are like Netflix and chill and Kira's like, fireplace for your home and chill like yeah. it's a it's it's like a personality trait at this point it's so good it's so good and I it's not like a personality trait that like comes and go it's been there since i've met her it's funny because it's like it is kind of tacky 
because it's a video of a fireplace. But, they, like, it's just, I don't know. Like, there's just something about it that's so good. Also, I think because we're in college and it's, like, there's room to be tacky. And it's, like, we obviously, none of, who is who is a fireplace right now? <laughs> I actually do have a fireplace. But that's not the point. <laughs> so, fireplace for your home is great. And it's just, like, and it's funny. It also makes people laugh, like, and they forget that it exists. And it's just good. Yeah. Um, but if it's not, but obviously in the summertime, fireplace for your home isn't really the vibe no. when it's warm out. No, that's not what you need. It feels uncomfortable. So I do also like a fish tank video, <laughs> or if you literally just look up psychedelic visuals on YouTube, very cool. Good times. Makes everybody happy. Anyways, I would say these are like the strengths of my home, and I would say it's great for altered states of mind. And gossip, cuddles, and creativity. I think it's a space that kind of heightens what you're feeling, which is why I think a big weakness of coming to my place is that if you're hungry or unwell, I don't do a great job of helping those. I'm not very mom-like naturally, so I also don't like to... Oh, God, my snack game is not just terrible. No, hold on cuz I'm I'm going to talk shit right now because <laughs> I love snacks. Kira the other day she's like, "Why don't you ever want to come to my place anymore?" And I just realized because I always need something and I always need something to eat. Yeah. And I'm like, "Bitch, I do not want another sparkling yeah, water." You're kind of going to starve. It's pretty sad. I don't know, it's definitely something I want to work on. Like it's not I'm not well-rounded in that capacity. I remember I was hungry, and she had cottage cheese mixed with goat cheese, and I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and now she was, like, enjoying the fuck out oh of God, it. She it was, was, like, so in good. there. It was a and blueberry goat cheese, and it was delicious. You would think that's, like, a <laughs> five-course meal. Well, first of all, groceries are expensive. <laughs> I don't snack, and I live alone, so it's it's hard to keep on hand. If you're not constantly going through them, because then I feel like they're not... They're just wasted. They're, yeah, exactly. So I think it'll get a little bit easier as I get older and probably have a family. And Anyways, anyways, that's me. I think we should go into Isis's now. So as far as strength and weaknesses go, Isis... <laughs> Mommy Isis is amazing if you are unwell. <laughs> Isis, her old, oldest sibling, definitely a mom. <laughs> I think it, I'm the youngest, so I think that's honestly a lot what draws me to her is I went to college, and I was like, Mama. <laughs> 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 and she absolutely provided that for me, and it was amazing. She's fed me more times than I can count. Snacks, tea, blankets. She's cracking open fruits. She's making tea. She's brewing coffee. If you need a hug, like a really good hug, <laughs> go to her place. Well, like tea's important. It is. Also, a lot of people, it's not, we don't, we don't culturally drink tea. So right. being in a home that is very tea forward is awesome because it's like you're like, oh, Tea's so good. Like, why don't we do this more? Why don't we do this more? <laughs> We're just not used to it. Anyways, are you thirsty? Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Oh, my God. If you literally pull out a menu, like her fridge half stocked with, like, at least four different beverages. <laughs> Kira? Kira. Kira has water, sparkling water, and whole milk. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of whole milk. And that's it, but not Isis. So it's literally like the Polar Express <laughs> in like the hot chocolate scene, or like the hot chocolate like musical number. And like hot, 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 we got it. Hot, 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 we got it. Yes. That's Isis. It's great. It's amazing, and it's so natural for her. I have to invite you over for food. For food to probably ever be involved, you know, with like girlfriend stuff, I'll be like, should we get some snacks? Like I'll like talk. We have to like preemptively talk about it. You can, like, show up to Isis and she'll just, like, be cracking open watermelons or, like, making dinner. She'll be like, are you hungry? Yeah, usually she's hungry, too, so that helps a lot, too. <laughs> or I don't think if you were ever, like, I'm hungry, she would be like, eh, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't think I could. <laughs> Never. <laughs> 
I feel like I have to get up. And I think I got that from my Armenian grandmother. This is like something very normal for Armenians. The mother or the grandmother doesn't sit down. Yeah. Like you're like begging them to like take a seat. Uh And I always thought it was really annoying as a kid. I was like, bro, just come eat. And now I'm like, huh, you don't want to. Like you just... You just don't. Like, you're having so much fulfillment (laughs) by cutting open a goddamn watermelon. Uh They're like, why would I sit? I could just be making this juicier. Yeah. So, I don't know. Which made me realize, I thought about this, like, a lot. Like, our different hosting styles. We have very different hosting styles. Insane. Um, I like to put in the effort, like, before anyone is there. Yeah. Um... And I don't like to be, like, fiddling very much, like, while guests are there. I like to be, like, just in, focused on, like, enjoying the company um, and kind of, like, experiencing it, like, with them. But you're very comfortable with, like, doing things while people are there. And, like, all the, like, details I put into my space are, like, almost – it's half – Because I think I'm just, like, an artistic, like, person and also love validation from other people in that regard. So it's constantly, like, for a viewer. Right. You know what I mean? And I love putting in the details for people to then come see it and, like, have a reaction. That's like That's that's the fun for me. Yeah, like, you're, you're like, behind the curtain kind of person. Exactly. So for me, like, if I think about... I like to have a musical with wings where you can't see what's happening backstage and all you see is, like, what I want you to see. Right. See, and then for me, I have no desire of prepping without presence. Like, I (laughs) want presence. I want people. And I think it makes it more fun for me. And also, it's part of it's a skill. Like, I, I cook a lot more than you do. So I don't have to give it my focus. Like, if if I was cooking something very special or very curated, I would probably want to prep beforehand. Like the borscht. Like the borscht. Like, that's something that takes a lot of time and thought and, like, I care. Sure. But when I'm making, like, chicken fried rice or, like, some kind of curry, like, I don't care if you're there, if you're watching. It doesn't make a difference. It actually makes it more pleasant for me because otherwise I'm sitting in the kitchen cooking by myself and it's not, like, stimulating. It's just, like, it's a chore at that point. When people are there, this is not a chore. This is a show. Yeah. Now you're getting friend time and doing something That I have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, that's really nice. I would say, like, the other thing. Like, a really big difference between the style of your hosting and the style of my hosting is I am, like, an engaged host and mm-hmm. Kira's a disengaged host. So, this yeah. is the thing. Like, you can go to <laughs> Kira's house and she can, like, walk upstairs and take a nap and you will just not notice. But, like, I feel like as soon as I disengage from my guests, like... It's, like, tense. Yeah. Like, it's, like, as if, like, someone's just stopped music. And I've always actually kind of, like, been jealous of that with Kira because, like, (laughs) I feel like I'm, like, sometimes I want to, like, just go outside and take a walk or sometimes I just want to, like, lay down for a minute. I feel like kind of, like, I I can't Irish exit. Yeah. Like, I cannot. Yeah. I love, like, creating, like, a space where, like, the people are either, like, engaged enough with each other, like, what's I've, like, created to where I can then just, like, float around in a way and, like, enjoy it, not do something go over here, and it's, like, not affecting anything. They can still have the good time that they came here for. Yeah, and, like, another thing, like you're saying, like, you really like to play music or have, like, you're, like, also likely to have, like, a cartoons on or a movie on Mm -hmm. and that's like something I cannot do like my speaking of like the senses like sound for you is a very big thing like when you come over like you're the one that plays music I very rarely exactly am playing music and like same thing you'll feel noise with just like white noise of like tv or movies and for me like the only thing that fills my space in terms of sound is socialization so I can have a lot of people over and they could be doing like little group things but like The sound is human made actively. I don't have just like sound, which is something that like is really nice to have because I think that's why, again, you get to be a little bit more like aloof. Like if I play my music, I'm stuck. Like my 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 shuffle's not good enough to just leave. <laughs> like you have playlists, curate. Like you like to create curate sound, yeah. and that's much different than what I can provide because I do not curate sound. So mm-hmm. I don't even have a playlist applicable for this. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm a very theatrical person. It's so silly to think about it as a production, but it's like practically a freaking production. It's like, what can I do? Music. (laughs) Music. Lights. Camera. Ready? Go. (laughs) Yeah, and then for me, I was going to say in terms of sound, like, fucking forget about that. And then in terms of smell, 
there's I was cooking and it smells like food. There was I was cooking and now I'm not and it smells like incense <laughs> or incense. Like the smells in my house are directly attributed to like what's going on. My stuff is so like sterile yeah. that it doesn't allow yeah. room. Well, you're in a literally brand spanking new apartment. Yeah. With all new appliances, with marble countertops, with well, I think, I think they're, they're laminate floors. So, you, you know, it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot brighter. It's a lot newer. It's real square. It's real square. Real, it's almost like an office. So basically what I have is an office, and I had to create it. But it's still like, but it's nice because it's like, you know, it's like, it's fresh. Fit and fresh. I picked my unit purely 100% without failure based upon the brightness. That was my number one factor. Like, how much light does this apartment get? Yeah. And that was, like, the only thing I considered for the most part. Like, two bedrooms and does it have light? Yeah. I would say literally, well, it's weird because we have the same problem with windows of, like, we only have light coming from one wall, which is so frustrating. Oh, my goodness. I would say that's, like, my biggest complaint about my place is, like, the lack of... Light. Ability for lighting. And then the reason why, even though we're both south facing, even though we both only have light coming from one place, the reason mine is brighter is literally just because I have like higher ceilings. So yeah. basically I have uh, office adjacent is what I was given. So Kira was given old and I was given office adjacent. And she, old you know, and dusty. And she paints, she decided to like lean into the colors and painting it pink. And basically what I've leaned into is like, okay, it can stay, stay angular. It can stay gray. But what I'm doing is I'm throwing in color. So like my kitchen chairs are orange and my like bar stools are green. And I'm just adding, and I have like basketball, historical figure painting things. And Kira's apartment is like groovy and I have lava lamps to add groove. Like it isn't naturally groovy. So basically like in terms of like sight, it's very bright, it's very clear. It's very like clutterless. Oh, this is a big one. You feel like you could touch anything in Kira's apartment. Mm -hmm. Even though Kira is not someone who <laughs> wants you touching all of her shit, you feel like you can go and touch it. Well, there's all. like I there I put out like toys. I yeah. literally like put out toys. Yeah. That I do want you to touch. Right. So in like my sophomore year or something, I found like a shake weight at a Goodwill and I was like, this is so funny. And just like wanted it to like be out to like the conversation it. pieces. For example, your lamp is not something you want people touching, but it almost looks like it can be touched. Yeah. Like, I feel like I can go <laughs> grab it because it has the glasses on it, too. I feel like I can grab it and just shake it. Uh -huh. Like, the only thing that's stopping me from doing that is, like, having a fucking frontal cortex. Very playful. Yeah, it's very, like, ju it just wants to be touched. Yeah. And then my apartment, I also have toys. <laughs> I also have things that want to be touched, but no. Nobody is touching my shit. No. Like, it looks like, a, not like a museum, but that more vibe of, like, it looks like things to be looked at. Yeah. Not, it and, like, it looks like they're nice. Right, but they're, they're like not, not plastic. Like I have a slinky, and Kira's the only person that ever touches it. I it's, broke it. <laughs> yeah, but it's one hundred, and we had the lightsaber, which Kira also broke. But my point is, is like we have toys and things that are meant to be. And I just doesn't care if you touch her shit. No, at I'm all. literally like I. No part of me gives people like I shouldn't. So then it's like, but I, so I, I my space <laughs> naturally is like, says don't yeah, touch. Yeah. Like I have a shrine and I feel like people stay like three feet away from it. <laughs> like it's insane. Well, and she has like giant like crystals, <laughs> like shit that looks like you just don't, you, you don't even want to like be in the realm of breaking it. But like, I also have like a bookcase and normal people walk up to a bookcase and like, will pull a book out and look at it. I have literally seen people go up to my bookcase and like tilt their head <laughs> and I'm like, you can touch it. Like, it's, they're just books. But, like, I don't know what it is, but people are, like, not touching yeah, my shit. Yeah, but the whole, it's the whole vibe of the space yeah. is what creates that. That, <laughs> even when there are things that are 100% touchable. Oh, also, I love keeping musical instruments around as, like, decor. Yes. Slash functional decor. I don't. Not that I don't like it. Like, I'd have a piano, like a grand yeah, piano. But, you just... but see, that's the difference. Kira has a keyboard. I would rather nothing until I could have, have a, grand a grand piano. piano. Yeah. So it's like, I will have one eventually. Yeah. It's just also going to literally... be a piano no one wants to touch. <laughs> right. I had, like, bongos hanging from the wall, which yeah. in no way looked good, but it's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah. Man. Grand piano. <laughs> Goals. The other thing is Kira's house is like you if she provided it, <laughs> you'd feel like you could go like crack a beer and like pour it in a solo <laughs> club from like up here like, 
Uh, and then my house, it feels like you like need to wait till someone serves you a cocktail. Yeah. No, Isis has a cocktail house. Yeah. I have. She's down near a keg house, like a keg that you'd be comfortable <laughs> putting on the carpet. It's more like a stoner house. Yeah, definitely. But, yeah. No, what would you call it? A, a stoner den. A stoner yeah. den. The Kira Shack is a stoner den, even yeah. though I'm not a stoner. But I love the vibes. I mean, I would say it's a cultural thing, really. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, you have a cocktail house. Yes. And I would say, like, my biggest weaknesses in terms of my apartment is, like, it's cozy in experience, not cozy in existence. Kira's house is cozy in existence. If you're sick, maybe not so much in experience. But, like, other than that, you're having a really good time if you're there. But in my right, place... Right, even if I'm not there. Yeah, if you're not there, you're fine. <laughs> like, you are... It's great. Yeah. But in my place, it's like, if I'm not there, you probably feel... Uh, like, the only reason my home feels like home is probably because I'm there. Yeah. Which sucks, because that's not what I'm trying to do, but right. it just is. <laughs> no, it's actually so funny. When we were talking about this, like, we what we realized, like, about our spaces and what they say about us, you're such more of, like, a naturally, like, warm and, like, inviting person, and your space is the complete opposite. Um, but it doesn't matter because you feel the energy, like, Radiating. from you. Um and, like, for my space, I have a harder time conveying that with, like, my language and body language, like, as a person. And so I, I have to create it in my space. Like, I have to have my space speak that for me. Right. Otherwise, if we, like, swapped and I had your space, I feel like no one would ever, ever ha want to come over or enjoy Right. Their, their time. Kira's yeah. house gives college, yeah. and mine gives somebody here has well, a job. Yeah, it gives college and just like artist funk, right? Town, and yours is like mature city uh, penthouse suite cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Black stainless steel. No, I was say in general, Kira is the creativer, creativist <laughs> one. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not that I'm not creative. It's just that part of her education is in the arts. Like art is like yeah. her, she, there's, she is an artist. Yeah. And I am. Well, yeah, exactly. It's practically a skill that I've just right, have developed. And so, for example, like I'm very creative, mm -hmm. but in a completely. Def yeah. Like in a completely like analytical way. Right. So it's I just not in. It's not like the stereotypical, because you think of like creative and you immediately think of like art, art. but there's so much, there's so much more to be. Well, that's why like in. for just a side note, like STEM, like them thinking about STEM and turning it to STEAM, like where art is a fundamental part of STEM is really important because it's like a lot of the solutions that you need, need creativity, oh, yeah. art, even no, design. It, exactly. Like I, who wants an ugly car? Nobody. You want a nice design. So it's like you should be able to take your skills, your hard skills, and find artistic ways to like yada, yada, yada. And like, you know, talking is my art. And so it's like, I guess Excel. <laughs> right. I mean, everyone's creative. Everyone just doesn't believe it. Yeah. So I would never get a PVC pipe and make it a didgeridoo. That's nice. That is nice. That's creative. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that we have in common is our bedrooms are not reflective of our home. No. Oh, those absolutely. Are just, those, so different. They might as well be closets. So different. Also, such a different purpose, which is like respecting the purpose of a room, huge as well. Bedroom is for sleep. You think I want pink cow print as I'm falling asleep to look at? Or like... Freaking whack ass mirrors? No, absolutely not. Sleep, peace, sleep. sleep. There's nothing, Rest. especially if you don't invest in the way it looks. It's so easy to just go to sleep. Right. Like when you have no <laughs> expectations, no anything. You're like, like I have black sheets and a black comforter and a black pillow and yeah. no extra pillows. Do you know how annoying it was when I had decorative pillows on my bed? Do you know how every night I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with these? Why do you think I want to fall asleep at work? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't work in an office, but <laughs> if I did. <laughs> Something that I think is important is everyone doesn't want guests over. Like, everyone is not trying to host, but that's true. something that's very important for yourself, especially, like, is, like, if we're talking about this young adulthood, like, for example, when you're in the dorms, you eat, sleep, study, socialize all in the same space and it really becomes hard to like 
associate well with that. So for example, like naturally, if you like snack a lot while you watch movies, either when you're watching a movie or sitting on your couch, you're gonna wanna snack. So for example, it's really important for me to never socialize in my room, never hang out in my room, because I want when I go in there for my brain to be like, okay, it's bedtime. Um, so even if you're like, okay, well, I don't really care about hosting people, you should still care about the ambiance of your space. Because at the end of the day, it's like you're living in it and it is going to affect you. And yeah. you can you can create something that will positively affect what you want to do. So, for example, I used to never be a homebody. I hate being at home historically. But my current apartment, I've just kind of created a space that I enjoy being in. And, like, I've made these vibes that I didn't have before. So now a part of me actually just wants to sit at home and just – exist in my own home and the only thing that was lacking was me creating these kinds of vibes and that's like a huge goal with like having a home and especially like getting older and like buying a home and like having a family and creating a space that you want to be in it shouldn't be a place that you feel like you need to like escape and like get out of the house yeah no that's that's facts right there because and it starts now Right. It starts as soon as you have your own space. Yeah. And, like, it sucks for people who are adults or young adults that don't have their own space because then you're, like, kind of controlless of the space, which I have sympathy for you. But there are still ways for you to – even in your own – like, in the dorms, for example, like, you know, I just – chose that I was going to do homework at school. Like, I'm just not doing it at home. And so, like, for example, if you're at home and you're living at home, like, you could easily just – homework is not being done in your bedroom, even if you have a desk. Forget about it. Just like, and like same thing, you could get LED lights for your room. Like it's not, you could find ways to hit those vibes that you're looking for. And just by simply changing the colors of your LED lights changes the entire vibe. Like And gonna, rearranging furniture. Oh, do that all day. Oh, and feng shui. Yeah, consider that. Yeah, I mean feng shui also like efficiency in your space. I'm constantly reassessing efficiency in my home. yeah. I mean, and then storage. Oh, my God. That one's so big. If you feel like your place is constantly cluttered, you probably have too many things. One, throw shit away. Stop buying garbage. Like, our consumerism is so... I don't even want to get started. I had to go reorganize my entire closet this week because I felt like it was just never what I needed it to be. Yeah. And just surely we got rid of so much shit by like actually being like, what is the purpose of the space? What do we want it to be? And then like making that. Mm -hmm. Like those are important things. So like you always have control and starting now is so much easier because you don't want to be like 30. You don't want to be getting married. Yeah. Consolidating a space from two individual people to like one home and just it being yeah terrible like if me and kira moved in together we'd probably be able to make it work but yeah and i think we both have we pretty pretty good we'd have a swag it's your time yo yeah it'd be it'd be we'd have cool we'd have a a when we have a studio oh Oh my god but we're gonna Um, have a mojo dojo fucking casa house when we get a studio like it's gonna be uh, all those things yeah i can't wait it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> um, okay. But it's your time to develop your opinion, including like interior design. In and your it's space. gonna change. Oh yeah. Like there's things when I was a freshman that I would ha- I had everything as like blue and gray as a freshman. <laughs> like so blue, so gray. But I was scared of color. Yeah. I think it's much better to like go really bold. And then be like, that was terrible. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Get weird. Who cares? Yeah. Can undo it later. I'm going to do it. It's stressful when you're broke and, like, (laughs) you're trying. But being broke, having limitations is where true creativity comes. So being broke is a limitation. Living with roommates is a limitation. All these things are limitations, and it'll help you become more creative and more yep. concise yep, in yep, what you're yep. looking for. You'll literally get smarter. Yeah, like your brain <laughs> will be like, ooh, ah. Ooh, ah, creative solutions. And because of that, you'll actually, when you have freedom, when you have space, when you have money, you'll actually be so much more efficient than someone who did it. Innovation, innovation that inspires. Is that what it is? I know there's like some good. There's like, some saying like that. Yeah. Anyways, okay. You know? <laughs> well, first things first, For you, what you need to do is you need to go home or go into your space and ask yourself and start thinking about the things that you like and do not like. And it does not have to change to something you do like. It just needs to change to something different. 
So you don't like what you see. You don't like your furniture. You don't have to change your furniture. Change the direction of your furniture. And like those little things will eventually help you figure out like what is most important. Anyways, wrap up. What, what's your place? What are the what are your the three big points? Gossip, cuddles, and creativity. And sex. And sex. My place. But that's the cuddles. Canoodling. Canoodling. That's that's why that was thrown in there. Mm. To be less crass. <laughs> Mine is socializing, eating, and laughing. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to Crisis with Kira and Isis. Bye, bitches.